Welcome back. Uh, I'm Tiffany. And I'm Andrea. And we are Relatively Unstable. Uh, don't forget to like, follow, share, subscribe, and all of that social media stuff that we're supposed to ask you to do so that we can get more followers and more likes and you'll listen to us and have fun with us. Um, <laughs> we told you that we were going to have something special the last time and I, for one, am bursting with excitement <laughs> um, from uh, our guest that has just like so graciously uh, agreed to be on with us today. Uh, we have with us Lisa Salvatore from Westchester County, New York, which we have like an interstate guest. So, woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> this is big time. We're big time now. <laughs> Lisa is an intuitive tarot reader and instructor. She's a is it Reiki or Reiki? Reiki. Reiki master, mm -hmm. astrologist, and certified health and wellness coach. Um. Lisa, why don't you tell us a little bit about what all that means? <laughs> okay, so basically I just help people to bring awareness to what is inside of them, with what we already know to be with us. And we often need just a little guidance and a little push along the way. So I do that through basic energy readings. Um, when I connect with my clients, it's like our frequencies get intertwined and I just usually will get what I call pings and it, Tiffany you've worked with me before. is it okay mm -hmm. that I say that sorry yes. you, yes. you, you kind of know how I how I do that and then once we start going I will sometimes use my tarot cards to enhance the information that I'm getting um, I do also do mediumship so I do connect to the other side um, astrology is awesome and it's literally like the soul map of you according to the planets where they were at the exact moment of your birth so that's really cool. It's like the astro psychology of a person. And I just love doing all of that too. Um, it's really just for validation for others. So it's like, I'm bringing something out that you likely already know, and then you work with it moving forward. So it's like an empowerment. I do it for empowerment purposes. And so obviously this is a gift. This is something that, and you just said, we all kind of, some of us need more guidance than others. Kind of tell us about how you realized that this was the direction your life was going to take, that you realized this was your gift. Okay, so I'm going to try not to be long-winded because I can <laughs> be who, so, be you. Okay. Yeah. So the very cliff noted version. Um, ever since I was a little girl, I knew that I was, I don't want to say different because that's kind of, a, I, did, I guess I didn't know I was different. I just knew that I thought of things in a much deeper manner than like an average five-year-old you know I would look at people and like I could see their soul which sounds kind of weird but it was like I could tell when they were sad I knew if they were happy if they were hiding it if they were lying like it was weird and but it didn't I kind of liked it I thought it was cool but my stomach always hurt and I would throw up constantly found out years later that the term for that is empath when you actually feel energy in your body of other people um, and most people are very empathic without recognizing that that's what it is. So, and back then when I was a child, that wasn't like a common thing, right? Now it is, but mm -hmm. I mean, now it's more known. But um, anyway, I would dream a lot very vividly. Like I would easily kind of like, which I now know is transporting to the other side of where I would get a glimpse of relatives that had crossed over and I would see them as children and I would hear the music and I would, it was, it was kind of cool. I always had a very active imagination. I had many imaginary friends. Um, you know, I, I knew I was tapped in to something greater. And I always knew there was something greater than what we could see in front of us. Always would feel that. I would sit in the back seat of my car, my parents' car, and I would look up at the sky and I would think, I can't believe my dad's driving this car right now. I wonder how he's doing that. What's he thinking? Like, I was literally always thinking, <laughs> I don't know, but just knowing I was different and tapped in. And so anyway, um, long story short, my teenage years were rough and I went into like a little bit of a depression and I started learning about astrology. And when I started learning about astrology, it was like a whole nother door blew open in my soul, in my psyche, and I just couldn't get enough of it. And then I went to a tarot card reader when I was 16 and she told me, and I'll never forget this. She was, her name was Linda, she passed away, but she was smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and she said to me, why are you here? And I just looked at her and I'm like, what do you mean, why am I here? She said, you're so damn psychic. She's like, you don't need me to read your cards. And I knew that I was, and we all are, everybody is, but I just, 
I guess I didn't want to hear that. And I'm like, no, read my future. Like I want to see what <laughs> right. going on. And she told me, and I'll never forget this. She said to me, you are going to be very well known for this work and you're going to do it. Like it's going to be your gig your full time. You're not a school person. And I remember just looking at her like, yeah, okay. This is so not going to be my, I didn't think it was possible that I would mm-hmm. ever be able to do that. And so I pushed that part of myself away, but it was always there. I went and worked normal jobs, normal, which is wrong with it for me. I just was never the office chick. It's just not my thing. And I would sit there and I would always feel this dread, like this unfulfilled feeling of soul. It was like soul sickness. Like I just wasn't. <laughs> Andrea's like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm a people person. I love people. But yet at my job, it was like, oh, oh what is this person? Want? I was always angry because I was so unfulfilled. And I would go home and cry. Sunday night would roll around and I'd be sick to my stomach because I had to go back to work blah, 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 the hamster wheel kept going. And I didn't see any way out of it because I didn't have a college degree and I was doing fairly well considering, and it it wasn't like I could just leave. That's how I felt anyway. Yeah. Fast forward um, in 2015, I took a different job, which was more money. And I knew in in the interview that I shouldn't take the job. I had that feeling. I was like, this is not a good idea, but I'm going to take it anyway. It was like, I knew it. I was there for one year to the day, literally. And it was even worse than the last job was because at the job prior, I had a really cool boss. I had great coworkers. We were like a big dysfunctional family. I just couldn't stand the job. I went to this next place where it was much smaller and not such nice people. And um, it was even worse. And I would go home and pray and write and light a candle every night. And I would say, please get me out of this job lovingly. You always want to use the word lovingly because you don't, you never know what the universe is going to throw at you. You're like, hey, I want to get out of this job. And then you get hit by a bus. You don't want that. So you want to just say, you know, lovingly get me out of here. I'm and writing this down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking that the way is like being intentional, like saying exactly yeah, like instead of, yeah, because yep. you're right. Like you could say, get out of this job and then you're dead. And then that's not, yeah. good, you know, <laughs> Or you say, like, I really want this person to get out of my life and you don't, you don't really wish them harm, but something bad can happen and then you'll feel horrible. So I always say, you know, life is not all love and light. Let's be real. Right. Uh, but lovingly is always, you want to reject that word anytime you're manifesting because you just want to make sure it's done in the highest form possible. So anyway, I got laid off and then I was already doing readings on the side and my husband was pushing me to just do it full time. He said, come on, let's get a a professional website made. And I had an issue about putting myself out there because it was scary. And this is not exactly, I was like very woo woo and and everybody knew I was like that anyway, but it was just still, I could kind of hide behind the mask of like a normal person, you know, not that I'm not normal, but at the time I was thinking, you know, this part of me would be shunned or this part, you know, and then I started doing parties and I would do like closet readings and my reputation started growing. I was getting a lot more clients. And when I went into it full time, my life just like, I mean, it opened up in a way I can't even describe. It's been amazing. I've met some really amazing people. Um, And I guess the takeaway from that is just to always be true to yourself and to honor the soul calling and pray and, and be hopeful and things can shift. You know, we're not meant to be in the same spot all the time. I love that. Sorry, Andrea knows all about that. <laughs> you just spoke my last, uh, what is this? What month are we in? November, my last like nine months of my life. Um, I transitioned out of my nine to five job to do a full-time entrepreneur, freelance. And what you were describing as far as like the Sunday dreads mm-hmm. and, you know, being like angry at the job like while you're at work, like that was me. And that's not who I am as a person. Like I'm not like, I'm not um, an angry type person. I don't keep that kind of energy around me all the time. And so, yeah, it was like totally shifting like who I was as a person. Like that's how, like, yeah, that's how unhappy I was. So I definitely related to that. There's something to be said about being able to come and go as you please. (laughs) like you get which is kind of nice but that's just an added perk Mm -hmm. so lisa do you um so can you kind of give us explain to us the difference between astrology mediumship tarot like how does that all work together and 
Um, I'll break them down one at a time just because it's easier and then I'll, I'll, I'll start with, I'll start with astrology. So basically we're all born at a specific time. Most of us have it on our birth certificate and, but it's so much more than what time you were born because the planets are constantly moving in the sky. They're bodies of energy and we're bodies of energy. So as those planets move, they, they trigger certain parts of us. And it's different for everybody because everyone has a different birth chart. Even twins typically have differences in their birth charts, okay? That's how intricate it is. So the exact moment of your birth, it's like a snapshot of the planets. And those planets, your chart will always be your birth chart. That's your soul map. That shows you where you've got your gifts, where you've got your strengths, where you've got some weaknesses, what you need to work harder at, what comes more natural to you. It's really, really cool. So did I do your birth chart, Tiffany? You've done like, um, you have, we haven't had a whole session of it, but we've done like a quick, you know, some quick snippets and it is very cool. So it tells you a lot about who you truly are at the soul level. And then you as a soul, you choose, cause it's always, I always, I'm a big person of free will. Yes, there's fate, but there's also free will. So your chart is like, it's some sort of a faded map of you, but you work with the energy as you see fit. So if you don't like something in your chart, or if it works against you, you feel, you do things to consciously change that, right? And it takes work, but that's what we're here to do. We're here to grow. If everything came to us easily, life would be so damn boring. Sorry, I just, <laughs> but you know, life would be so boring. You're fine. We say oh. the F word a lot on this yeah. show. <laughs> um, astrology, which is really cool, is it does also show ancestral karma. So it does show how things pass down in the lineage, what you're here to clear, um, how you can work with that better, it's really, really cool. Now, when I do an astrology chart, it, it just happens. I do get a lot of psychic information. So I'm tapping into the, sometimes I get past life, then I'll get things to tell the person to be aware of, energy around them, what's, what could be coming up in the future for them to be conscious of. And so they can maybe determine a better way of working with something that they would not have thought of had I not brought that out. Tarot cards are more... Um, they're like, well, I have them right here. So I'll just, if no one's ever seen it, I'll just show like this, like here's one. This is a traditional, um, the traditional Rider weight tarot deck, which is pretty much the most universal. But basically there's 78 cards in a deck and they're very multifaceted, but the cards represent a layer of your psyche. It's, this is how I read, read them. It's a divination tool, yes, but it's really more about uncovering and discovering patterns and thoughts and behaviors that could be repressed or suppressed in the psyche. So it's like, I've had people say to me, how are you, how do you know that? It's like, you're reading my soul. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> like, that's the point we're reading your soul. And I know that that sounds weird, but that's what it is. And it's, it's, again, it's, it will tell you things you already know. It will also maybe tell you some stuff that you didn't already know. And then you figure out how to work with it. So again, the tool is you, right? I'm just the, the channel. And then mediumship, that is, Something I've always had, but never felt comfortable with because I would get a lot of information, but then I would be like, okay, but how do I make that, how do I make that more structured? Because it would come at me like, you know, real fast, like a TV, but then it's like, okay, well, how do I structure that? So over the years, just through meditation and trusting spirit to blend with me and praying and it, it really just works. So it's like, and, and I don't know if you want to share your ex experience with me. Sure. Um, well, I can say that. <laughs> so I am, I am a believer and uh, I, and I also come from a mother who has always been quite intuitive and quite tapped in and quite sensitive, I would say, like always thinking her, of her as very sensitive and um, she kind of is um, introduced me to um, my first um, experience and it blew my mind and since then I've had um, other experiences that meh but then uh, my sister put me on to Lisa and I told I was telling Andrea I was like this girl is the truth <laughs> and when um, and I can speak to both like just um Lisa, how you kind of just help give me guidance and also um, comfort because when she 
when someone comes through her or when a spirit comes through her, is that, am I saying that right? Yeah. Um, well, I want to just correct, sorry. I just want to say, because I know some people are very freaked out by that whole process because, and I get it, but when that, when spirit comes to me or through me, it's like, um, it's not like they, I don't know how to explain it. It's not like they're overtaking me and I go into a weird trance or anything like that. It's like, I will pick up their mannerisms because they're coming to me energetically the way they were in life. So I will maybe start speaking like your grandmother spoke to you and you're like, oh, it's like she's here because well, she is, it's her energy. But, um, or they'll, they'll make me smell things so I can convey like an odor that will relate you to them or I'll pick up something they wore all the time. And it's whatever connects. When I do mediumship, I always pray before and I say, listen, if you're gonna come and give me information, don't say grandpa's here. You need to give me something <laughs> stronger than that because anybody, most people have a passed away, a grandfather in spirit. So it could be anybody. Give right. me something bigger and better. And that's, anyway, sorry. I didn't I can, no, you're fine. And I can tell you, so I lost my grandmother this year. Um, but I, after I lost my dad, so maybe last year, last year, I usually try to call Lisa around March because that's an important time for me. And um, the last, when I talked to her, I think last March, um, she asked me this question and I'm like, it was so weird. She asked me, what's with the elephants? And so I'm like, the elephants. And my sister and I had just been to my grandmother's house and my sister had just talked about, was like making fun of her for having all these elephants in her house. She's not a Delta. She's <laughs> an animal lover. She's had all these weird elephants in her house. And Lisa said to me, and I hope this is okay to say Lisa, but Lisa yeah. said to me, um, um, they're getting ready for her. Like there's, they're making a space for her. <laughs> and my grandmother, it was healthy as a horse at that time. Like she was so healthy. That's a stupid phrase, but she was so healthy at that time. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, let's see where this goes. Now, what I will say, that wasn't my first experience with Lisa and she has not been wrong yet. <laughs> so, um, but you know, you move on, you take your information and you can't just let it like, Run, yeah. you know and so all good go on and sure enough uh out of nowhere this year she ended up um uh, getting COVID or she got sick and COVID blended with her sickness and you know it was very quick and guess what I have sitting on my shelf <laughs> an elephant I, that's that's what I have left of her is one little wooden elephant and then there's been there have been other times where she's like oh she said, when you move, your house is going to have a number on it that is, um, that, that symbolizes your father. It has something to do with your father's age or birthday. And the house address does not. But then when I broke the numbers down, it came, it, I read it as 62, which was the age he was when he passed. And then there have been other things, like she'll be like, she's clearly my grandfather is clearly like coming through and she's like she'll give me specific things like she gave me dial soap which was like a big thing in this house i'm actually sitting in his house right now <laughs> um or like um she gives me birthday like she it is the it is an experience that if if you haven't had it with the right person and i don't know lisa can you maybe talk to us about like if does it matter if you actually connect with the person that, that's doing it, like yeah. I'm so comfortable with you. <laughs> so I don't know if that opens me up more where I don't, you know. It does make a difference. And I always tell people because I'm not everybody's jam and that's totally fine, you know? And I, I will always tell people when you, you should never just book somebody on a whim. You should, you have to feel it. You have to say like, you have to look at their website, get a feel for that, how they work, read the testimonials. Um, that's why I think pictures are so, so important because a lot of people are visual. So they want to see, mm -hmm. oh, she's got nice, kind eyes or a nice smile. You can really read a lot by a person's, I mean. That's I, why I pick my doctors. Like, yeah, <laughs> you can always tell it's energy. So if you feel not comfortable, go, go find someone else. But um, I have had, and I'll be honest, I always... To me personally, I feel like I, I am a personal, I don't know how to say, this is going to sound so bizarre, but I'm a personal person. Like I treat 
the people that come to me, I want them to leave me feeling better. Even if, even if something potentially negative came through for them, I want them to feel comforted somehow. I don't want them to leave me feeling like I, I made them feel worse or I gave them doom or gloom. But I will say, Tiffany, um, to your point about your grandmother, I don't often predict death. However, if something comes through strongly for me to say, I know I have the clearance to say it. And I'll always ask first, do you want me to tell you everything, even if it's sensitive? And usually the person will say yes. And so then I know I have clearance, but I also know I wouldn't be getting the information if the person couldn't handle it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, sidebar, many sidebars I go off of. So to your point though, yes, you wanna have an energetic connection. And if you're in the middle of a session with somebody and you're just not feeling it, or you're getting a bad vibe, you have that right to say, I'm sorry, but I, I'm, you know, I don't wanna do this. If you're not comfortable to leave the session and whatever you decide monetarily at that point, that's on you and the other person, I guess. But I just feel like it is such a um, personal experience. And if you go in closed off, that's another thing. I've had people come in, especially when I was doing a lot of in-person events, which obviously because of COVID, a lot of it's gone virtual, but I would have people, it doesn't happen that often, but I would have people that would sit there like this, like, well, you should know. And when people do that, I do not respond well to that. I'm a Taurus. I have a temper. And I'm <laughs> I don't like when somebody treats me like I'm being inauthentic. It you're instantly puts my guard up. And I will say, you're blocking me and I'm not going to be able to read you anyway. So you're going to waste your time and your money and mine. So you might want to leave. And usually when I do that, they're like, okay, like they'll stop and they'll kind of open up most of the time because it's not, it's not to prove a point it's to help you. So if you're not, you know, whoever's sitting here. So if you don't want that, why are you here? So you really want to check your expectations also. Like what, what are you trying to get out of the session? set an intention, talk to the person that's reading you so that you kind of have a good energy flow there. And it's not about giving information. It's just about setting in, letting them know what you expect to, to come away with. I always ask, what do you, what is your expectation for this session? I will always ask that. And usually the people will say, you know, I want to connect to my mom or I'm having a hard time making this big decision. Can you help me? And then other things will come up, but then when I know, okay, this is their expectation, I know where they're at and it opens up the energy. And it, it, it is amazing. It really is. I, I, and there are things that I will even say that maybe will come up later where it's like, okay, it's so like so much later and you're like, but it's so, it's, so, it stands out so much that it's, I'm a very forgetful person, but there are things that if maybe Lisa said it a couple years ago and, you know, three weeks ago it happens. I will somewhere in my mind be able to connect back like oh my god like she told me that like two and a half years ago and now it makes sense that's why i record them now for everybody so that you have them but i've had people tell me like years later that something i predicted they thought i was crazy so like yeah okay and they they put it away they forgot about it and they were listening to the recording and they're like oh my god you know, and then they'll call back. So I joke around. I'm like, okay, job security. They're coming back. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So I, do you have, so you mentioned kind of like people who come in closed off. What's like your, what's like the most challenging part of this work for you? Like, what is it that, that really challenges you, whether it be from other people or, you know, or, or in the work itself? Ooh, okay. So I am an empath. So I do pick up when I'm in, especially when I'm in a session with somebody, I pick up their energy, their emotion. So if they've gone through some trauma and I'm tapping into a spirit on the other side, or even just their own energy, I become very overwhelmed with the emotion. So I work really hard to, and I've done a lot of work on this to try to separate myself a little bit. And that's difficult for me. Um, for anybody that knows astrology, I'm a Pisces moon. So that's very hard for me. I'm very empathetic and it, I, I blend easily with people. So that's always a challenge. Um, when parents have lost children is always a big, huge challenge, you know, comforting them and going through that. Um, I get, this is how I could describe it. When I work with the way that I get energized is by working with others. So by giving my energy to my clients, it really energizes me. So I'll have a great session or, or a great day of sessions with people. And, 
you know, feeling really good because I know they're feeling really empowered or a lot of validation came through for them. And then I'll be high, 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 not literally, but you know, high on life. And then I'll, I'll have like a week where I just like will hit the floor. Cause it's like energy overload. So I have to be very conscious of taking care of myself, okay. self-care. And that's become a huge part of my routine in the past two or three years. And I've had to recognize that it's not selfish to do that. It's actually more selfless because I can't give all of that if I'm constantly burnt out. Mm-hmm. So the energy transference has, is something that is probably the most difficult about this, but also it's very rewarding. So I don't know. It's, yeah. So- I can't imagine. Like, I know, like I was, I, that's when, when I knew you were coming on, that's one of the things that I thought about was how do you care for yourself? How do you not let, I mean, like for people who, who are not like in tune or how, you know, since like for just like somebody who's like a writer, let's say, or a graphic designer who are just moving about, (laughs) moving about their day, you know, there is such thing as an energy suck, like the, the people and the events and the things that just zap you, like in my work, like I can, I can stay put in the work, but by the time I'm done for the day, I am completely shut down and exhausted. Um, and so, and to have to, to be, I don't know, feeling, and that's just, you know, my every day or whatever. And then to be, for you to be actually be like, I don't know, absorbing that energy. It's like, I feel like I have like this image of you as kind of like as a shock absorber, like to be feeling a sponge. Yeah. Like that just, it, the thought of it is overwhelming to me. I do a lot of protection work for that. And I take a lot of, I have a lot of alone time. I love alone time. <laughs> it's like my, <laughs> um, you know, just an example of sometimes not even recognizing how, how sensitive we can be as, as human beings, as energetic beings. I was in Italy with my father two years ago and we were in, we were, we were on the Amalfi coast and we went to Positano and you have to walk up like a mountain kind of, you know, it's like everything's on a hill there. And I remember being worried about him because he's in his seventies and he's pretty in shape, but I was like, okay, it's, it's really hot. It was one of those really hot summer days. And I was concerned about him and he's like, I'm fine. Stop it. I'm fine. I'm like, okay. So we hiked up the little hill and we were waiting for the bus and it was so hot, like ridiculous. It was August. It was so hot. And we're sitting there and I'm talking to my dad and I'm looking at a map. And all of a sudden I was like, I think I'm going to throw up. He was like, really? And I don't know. It came out of nowhere. I felt totally fine. It wasn't like I had a heat stroke or anything. I was drinking water. I was eating. I was totally fine. And I really was going to vomit. And it was the weirdest thing. And I got up because I was starting to feel weak. And I, my dad's like, oh, look. And I turned around and there was a girl behind me, a little girl. She was probably like 10 having a heat stroke. And she was, and I was like, oh, that's why I feel like that. So instantly, like my hero instinct took over and I went across the street and got like watermelon and water and I came out and gave it to her and she ended up being okay. But it was so scary because it was like, I could feel what she was feeling. And I was like, okay, Lisa, put the wall up, put the cloak on and just try not to absorb it. And then it stopped. So it's just, it's stuff like that. That happens quite a bit to me. That's like, how do you like, I'm sorry, Andrea, were you about to ask something? Yeah, I just wanted, I mean, it, this kind of is all in the same frame of mm-hmm. mine, but like, so like being that I'm assuming that you're not meeting clients in person anymore because of right. life in 2020. Um, so like how, like, I guess like, how are you feeling the energy from people like virtually and like, and like how, like, does it, does it like come through you different and Strong. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, no, but like are. if it's, yeah. It's a question. It's actually stronger. Oh. And it's funny because I did not believe, I, I've always done phone readings and um, Skype and to me it's energy. So it's, it's really, it's an energy exchange and it's, I always thought maybe in person was better, but then I was doing so many in person and I was finding, I was absorbing a lot more. And to be honest, the result is the same. So Now that I've just been doing virtually, I actually prefer it, to be honest. I've done parties on Zoom, um, because to me, I'm still seeing you. It's not like, you know, I'm not looking at it. But even if it was just on the phone, it's it's energy. So I don't want to say like, this is going to sound wrong and I don't mean for it to, but (laughs) it's like if you're you're talented or gifted at anything, it doesn't matter what it is, 
you're going to be able to do it kind of like, you know, like sometimes I'm laying in bed at night and I'll just start getting stuff on one of my friends and I'm like, oh God, and I got to text my friend, I'm <gasps> texting in my bed. Like, that's just how it is. You know, like if you're an artist, you get your inspiration at, you can't pick and choose when you get it. You just, you get it. So it's like, yeah, it's kind of, um, yeah, it's, I prefer, I prefer virtual. Okay. So do you get like the questions, you know, once people find out who you are and what you do, are they immediately like, well, can you tell me something now? Um, you know, or, um, you know, ch or challenging you like, well, if that's the case, then um, tell me something about myself. Like, you know, yeah, I do get that. not a lot, believe it or not, but I think and this is what I've been told. I don't, I'm not saying that this is true, but people have said to me that I, I get this a lot. Oh my God, you're so normal. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to be? Am I supposed to be like, have some weird look to me or like just, I get that a lot. And I also get, um, the testing doesn't typically happen as often as it used to. And I'm not really sure if that's just like, because I, it's, I, it's not something I bring up to people when I meet them. It's just, if it comes up casually or organically, I'll talk about it. And I can really read someone, like if someone want if someone's genuinely interested we'll talk about it but I can also tell when someone thinks it's bs so I won't even bother but if they come to me and ask me but I you know then I'll talk about it but I've also had many people that did not believe in anything that I've said something to where they were like okay like that's weird how'd you know that and I'm like well if you really want to know you can always call me and we can have a, a full session like I kind of put the boundary in place because if they really need to know something I'm going to tell them but mm -hmm. it's um I don't get that too often. Now watch, I'm going to get that because you said that. Right. <laughs> okay. it's part of the deal. It's part of the package. You know, you're going to have skeptical right. people. Yeah. The way it goes. There's skeptics for everything. Yep. Andrea, have you ever like had a reading or? Yeah. Yeah. I've had, I actually had one um, in August that was, um, and it, it was with a friend of mine who was kind of just starting out reading cards and, you know, she was just like, oh, I'm just looking for a couple friends to like try, try her new deck out. And she was, you know, and she ended up telling me some really amazing things that I was like, huh, yeah. well, that's, that's oddly specific to me <laughs> in my life. Like, okay. Um, and like, kind of like what we were saying earlier, like, um, like I do kind of like take stuff from that and just kind of like you know I I take what applies to me and, and what doesn't apply to me I kind of just you know let it go um but uh I do enjoy having my cards read I do enjoy like talking about like the future and plans and like energy shifting like like I'm interested in in that kind of stuff I've just only had done it once but um but I do consider myself to be really intuitive. And I was thinking about that before this call. Excuse me, gotta get my orange juice in. <laughs> um, and like how, um, it's a little sidebar short story of, about me. I had an intuition or premonition about my father's passing like three days before it happened. Mm. And he wasn't like in the hospital or anything like he wasn't like you know he had chronic chronic illnesses but wasn't incapacitated in in any way and up until like the couple of days before I was just like saying things that was like like very unusual like oh I don't think he's gonna be around when I get married he's not gonna be able to walk me down the aisle I had no reason to say that or think that or feel that but I did. Um, I was talking about when I was going to graduate college and I said, oh, my mom will be there. My aunt will be there. I don't know if my dad will be there. There was no reason for my dad not to have been there. If he was alive, he absolutely would have been there. He paid for 90% <laughs> of it. So he, sh he definitely should have been there if, if, if he was alive. And like all of this happened like between Wednesday, Thursday, and then he died on Friday. And like, it was such a weird thing because like, I was like, I could feel it, I guess, or sense it or whatever, but like, 
it's one of those things like you don't really like, I, I guess I didn't know an, or trust enough in my intuition to, to do something about it or to like, you can't try change. To, yeah, yeah. So, and there's been other things in, in, in my life that have happened that way. Like me being very trusting of people in very dangerous situations where, you know, logically I should not have trusted these people, but I did and everything turned out to be okay, you know, but, um, but yeah, like, I guess I'm like, I'm trying to learn how to like trust that intuition and trust those, those overall like feelings about stuff like that. So yeah, like it's, it's so interesting, like all of this stuff. Well, I mean, it, it is all energy. That's what we are. So we, I believe that our souls know things on a different level than we can logically explain or describe. Um, see, now this is what happens. Like, as you're talking, as we're talking now, I'm starting to get like, okay, the spirit's here. So, <laughs> <laughs> but okay. So are you a Leo or why is Leo season important for you? Yep. Okay. I am a Leo. Okay. See, Tiffany, who is this person? <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Um, I want to talk about three weeks before your father's passing, okay? okay. How, how many years, what's the six attached to this? Was this in June or on the sixth of a month? His birthday no. or his passing? Okay, what's the six? Why are we seeing the number six? It I'm could not, be the sixth of the month or June. Um, well, Jul July, I mean, which is the seventh month, but um, he retired in like June or July. No, it's not that. Um, okay, this has to be somebody within the family that that number's connected to, the six, but I'm gonna just say, I feel like three weeks before, what I'm getting is that three weeks before he passed, I'm feeling like this exhaustion come over my body. So I'm feeling like very, very tired, mm -hmm. like I'm normally tired. Like it feels like I'm so tired. I don't know why I'm so tired. Like something's going on in my body, okay? Mm -hmm. I do feel like he wasn't feeling well for a little bit and he didn't say anything. So I just want to tell you that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he didn't think it was anything major. Did he have like a, was it, was it like a, um, was he unconscious? Was it like, so I don't like, we didn't get a, we didn't get an autopsy, but we believe it was a heart. Okay. Thing. Don't tell me, don't tell me anything else because what, what he's making me feel is like, I want to talk about my head. Cause I want to talk about like, I know you're saying heart, but mm -hmm. I'm at, head so it feels to me like I'm losing oxygen losing hmm. losing function like it's like something's not working properly it could have started there but it's like something's not working properly mm -hmm. and it's going up so it to me feels I feel a lot in my head so I also feel like like a equilibrium balance issues hmm. of that nature mm -hmm. was he a Libra no okay because I also see the scales of Libra so I'm wondering if that's if he's showing me like hmm or or balance in the body it could be one of those two things he was not a lawyer right because that's also no, Libra. That's right. my dad yeah <laughs> oh. okay so they're probably blending okay hold on see this is what they do and now as you said my dad i got really hot so i'm like i just want to like 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 um it's energy so they're they're both around each other um okay your mom's mom is also in spirit right andrea andrea mom's yeah. mom okay so do they have a really funny relationship in life? Because I feel like there's like joking around between the two of them. Like, like when he passed, she was there like to greet him. So it was kind of like, huh. very, like, huh. like he had some time to kind of get acclimated. They're showing me like, it wasn't a, it wasn't like, I don't know how to say this the right way. I, he makes me feel like he was unconscious, but he was aware of what was going on. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When he was unconscious, he was like kind of on the other side and kind of in this dimension, which happens, they do that. So mm -hmm. he was seeing your grandmother, but again, it's like he, it was comforting for him to see her. Like it was like he knew, but I wanted to also say like he wasn't feeling well prior, okay? okay. I don't know, I'm hearing, and I don't even know if this is the name of the song, but I'm hearing blue suede shoes, which I think, don't even know who sings that song. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. That makes sense for you, for your dad? Um, not really, but okay. I mean, in a, I mean, he was a lover of music in general. So okay. yeah, like, and he listened to all kinds of stuff. Okay. 
Um, all right, so yeah, so just know that he's around you, but also there's three, you have, do you have three sisters? What's with the three girls? Mm -mm. Am I reading you? Okay, so yep. I'm probably <laughs> okay. Three sisters. There you go, okay. I mean, I mean, and we do joke, well, I joke that I am the, the fourth <laughs> Langford know. sister, yeah. so. No, 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 but that, but see, this is the kind of stuff that they do to show you, hey, we're really here, like we're a joke, we, we still have our sense of humor, we still have, we're, just because you don't physically see us, energetically, we are with you. And they feel what is in our hearts. And that's like the most important thing to know that they feel what's in our hearts. So even though you don't, may not say it, they feel it. And so it's important, you know, you said something before that I wanted to touch upon, Andrea, you said that um, if I knew I would have done something different. That's something that I hear often. And what I've learned is we all have a soul path and we all have something called exit points in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we as a soul choose these points and it's, it's not as free will, it's not, it's more, it's more predestined than we think, like when we're gonna pass, how we're gonna go, you know, there's been people that have dodged death only to die a week later in a completely different manner because it's, it's your time, it's your time. I truly firmly, from what I've seen and felt and the people that I've worked with, that is true. So don't ever feel like you could have done anything to change it because that was his lot. Like yeah. that was what he chose as a soul. He contracted that to be the case mm -hmm. for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Um, <clears throat> but um. As I'm talking to you also, I'm, I'm still, I'm feeling someone who was a heavy smoker as well coming into the picture here, um, who's with your dad. It doesn't feel like it's your dad. It feels like it's it's someone in your dad's family. I think it might be his dad. Was his dad a heavy smoker? It's a, it's a heavy smoker. It was like a cloud of smoke. Um, he, my, my grandfather died when I was really young. So I didn't really know, but that doesn't surprise me though. Yeah, because it's, there's definitely another man there. It feels like a grandfather and is smoking. Um, do you have like a Terry or a Terrence in, in the family somewhere? Yeah, I do have a Terry. Alive? Mm-hmm. Okay. Who is that? She's a cousin. Okay. Is her father also in spirit? I believe so. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is, they're bridging, but I feel like her father's on a different, because I feel the energy going to another side of the family. So it's like, maybe not as close, but they're connected. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they show me Florida for some reason with, with that family. I'm not sure why, but I see like something about Florida. Okay. Um, coming up there. So yeah, so they're, so they're all just letting you know that it's very active, that they're, that it's here, it's real. So interesting. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry, random. You're talking about it and it just starts coming through. That's what happens. That's yeah, what and this is the craziest thing, like, I've had a reading with Lisa where like she literally started coughing because she was talking about someone who was smoking weed like she knew like this person is smoke is a weed smoker <laughs> she's like has to drink her water yeah they stay because you feel it that well that's how they let me know like how they pass or what it was like before they you know they passed and um then I can convey that. So um, why am I feeling like I'm losing, like I can feel like I'm losing my air, I'm losing air or I feel like I, my hearing is going or, and they're like, oh, okay, yes, this is what happened. So they're making me feel, to validate to you that yes, this is me, this is my vibration, this is my energy, I'm really with you, I'm here. And sometimes they just do it. It's not even to give you like a message per se, it's just to let you know that they're here, that they're with you. You know, it's, sometimes it's just as simple as that. I think sometimes that's all you need. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes like there are, are, I mean, I would say most times when I call, it's like, and that's why I do call when I do, because I'm like, hopefully this is when I'll be most connected, especially because I do have siblings and I don't know how this works, but I just am like, I imagine that, you know, um, you know, I'm like that my dad is needed. <laughs> all over the place so I'm like I'm like if you could just give me this time then that would be great dad mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's interesting too because I find like with um people that are connected in this lifetime like sisters brothers cousins I could read for somebody and like like for example you, you two are close friends correct so I could read for Tiffany and Andrea your am I saying your name right Andrea right yes okay, Andrea. you're uncle 
could come through to Tiffany and talk and say all these things. And then I read you and he doesn't come through at all. And I'm like, okay, I guess uncle so-and-so just <laughs> didn't, you know, his energy. Cause spirit is like us. Sometimes we have low energy. Sometimes we don't feel like talking. Sometimes we're doing something else. It's the same. It's really the same, but also too, um, I don't normally even know who's connected because it, it's not like I sit there and research my client. And contrary to what people believe about psychics and mediums and we don't, well, I can speak for myself. I don't research people. I'm just like, and okay, you know, I, I don't feel the need to because it's, it's authentic. So it's not like I'm searching for them online. Um, I won't even realize people are connected sometimes. It takes, and until they tell me or, or they'll say like, oh, you spoke to my sister and most of the time I, if I connect with that person again, I'll remember them, but usually I don't, unless I've worked with them a few times, then I'll remember them, but normally I don't. So anyway, just another sidebar off of many. <laughs> and then like, do you have like, like just now, like you're talking, but, um, you know, there've been experiences where I have spoken to you and, you know, we'll just start chit chatting and then you're like, stop, because this is coming through right now. Like I have to, like, I'm feeling something right now. Or like, is it, is that the norm? Or is it like, sometimes you have to like warm up to it too. Like, you know, like, how, do you understand what I'm asking? Yes, I do. <laughs> it depends on the energy of, of the person and of myself that day, particularly in our, in our exchange. But I've had clients that won't stop talking and I'm, I get frustrated because I'm like, okay, you have to stop talking because I'm getting all these things. So then I'll tell them and I'll, I'll be nice about it and funny. And I'll say, okay, I know you like to, cause I can tell when someone's a real talker like myself, I'm a talker, but I'll say, okay, you got to stop talking. Just say yes or no. And they're like, okay. And then they'll stop. And then I'll say, you know, but, but validate where needed. So if I ask you, you know, does that make sense? Just say yes or no. You don't have to get, go into detail, just yes or no. Um, but yes, that sometimes I'll ask somebody to elaborate on something and they'll start saying it. And then I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'll start getting stuff. Because as I feel it, I wanna, I have to go with it. Cause it's like, not just, a, it's, it's, I'm getting the emotion. I'm getting the feeling behind it. I'm getting all of it. So if it leaves too quickly, I might, I won't have it anymore. And then it's like a fleeting moment, you know? So it's, it's kind of hard to sometimes navigate, but it all works out. Mm -hmm. What's like the most jarring or a, experience you've had where like you've been like like it was almost too much for you have you had those experiences or something that's just kind of shaken you a little bit and how do you handle those moments where something comes to you and it's it's might be a little bit much for you lisa and how do you manage that i just had, I had one very fresh in my mind from two days ago um i read for a, a woman who i've read for before and i read her prior she lost a daughter to a um, to an overdose, and I've spoken to her prior to that happening. So then this happened, and we we spoke, and we just spoke recently. And I picked up like clear as day from her daughter's energy some very important details that were pertinent to her passing that she had heard contradictory details through someone else that she didn't believe. And I didn't know that. And so I was just like, we were just talking and I was like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm hearing. I was like, I'm just gonna tell you. And and I, it was clear as day, like, mommy, stop. And I said, did she call you mommy? And she, and she started crying. She said, yes, because she was in, in her late twenties, this girl. She said, yes, she called me mommy. I said, okay, stop. I said, don't say anything. And I was picking up on all of these things. And, and she just was like, that is exactly what I needed to hear today. Cause that's what I want to know. And she said, thank you. You've given me so much peace. And it was, it was kind of, it was very, very rewarding to me that that happened, but the way that it happened was so not expected. And it was just like, um, I was like overtaken with emotion just because I, I don't know what it was. It was just, it was wild. So that was the most, I guess, recently jarring mm -hmm. that I can think of. But um, you asked if, you asked me something else, I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, how do you manage that? Like if you have some, if something comes through that's, you know, so upsetting or, you know, or if there's a feeling that comes through, like, how do you manage either um, relaying that? If, if I, if you, if you say, do you want me to tell you what I hear? And I say, yes, but it's something that's like pretty bad, mm -hmm. you know, how do you handle that? How do you, what do you do in those, those moments? I say, I'm getting it. 
So, okay. So I will say if spirit's coming to me and they're, they're conveying to me a detail and that's likely a very important detail. And even if it's hard for someone to hear, and I've had this happen with murders, I'm not kidding. I've had people make me feel how they've passed. And I'm like, oh geez, I have to say this. And I'll collect myself and I'll say, are you, can I speak freely with you? And they'll usually say yes. And I'll say, okay, this is what I'm getting. I feel this, I feel this, I feel it. And they're like, yeah, mm -hmm, that's exactly what happened. I'm like, okay. And, and then it's like them saying yes, makes me, it gives me peace because I, I've conveyed the message appropriately. But it's hard because you can like feel their pain in that yeah. moment too. But yet it's something they needed to hear for validation or, so yeah, so that is, that is hard. It's, it, but it's part of the territory, you know? And part of the healing, I think, also. How does your work help you, like as a person? Like, do you do you do you find healing? Like, do you ever say, do you ever like um, get done with a session and, and you're like, oh, my problems aren't so bad? Or <laughs> like, 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 well, no, I don't. No, I mean, I'd, I'd be lying if I didn't stop sometimes and say, whew, like I've, you know, that was heavy or. But, but it's never in a way where I'm like, oh, thank God I don't have their life. I never think that way. I feel so much compassion. So it's just more of like a, I, I'm grateful. I'll, I'll thank, you know, God or whom, whomever for the blessings that I do have and, and pray for that person to find their peace or their, their space or their way. But um, no, I'm, I'm actually like a bleeding heart. So it's kind of bad. I mean, it's good in a lot of ways, but I mean, the other day we, cut a tree down and I cried for three hours because I saw the Cardinal flying around like, where's my tree? And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm so confused. Like over this tree and it literally like three day grieving process over the tree. But that's just how I am. So I, I like, I don't know, I feel so deeply. Do you have a few minutes? Cause there's another question that I want to ask you. Yeah, and, go ahead. Um, so how do you, um, gee, I just, I just forgot the question that quick. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Um, we were talking about the bird and the tree, <laughs> the bird and the tree. And this is a terrible interview moment. How did I just lose that question so quickly? Oh my gosh. It was so important to me. Um, oh, um, you asked me how, if I think like, oh, I'm glad I, I don't, I know what it was. I know what it was. So <laughs> Often what like, so I am not really smart in astrology, but I'm big into it. Like I use it as a guide. Like I'm very much a believer in who I am. And, um, you know, anybody who knows me, Andrea, what's my sign? Like, you know what my sign is, you know, like you, I'm off, I'm constantly looking at the traits and, you know, um, and I, I just haven't really like invested the time in, but like when I talk to people like you and when I just, you know, come across things, I'm constantly reading up on this stuff and I have a belief about it and, I'll, you know, we'll hear things and I'm going to just put this out there because we're black girls. And a lot of times, particularly, I feel like in the black community, that's especially religious, um, they'll be like, oh, that's like the devil's work or that's not, you know, that's not going against religion or whatever. Um, and my POV is, you know, there's a higher power and that higher power gives us tools and resources and gifts to, to guide us through life. How do you explain or address that? Pretty much how you just said it. <laughs> it no, it, it is a gift. We all have uh, talents, right? And I'll, I'll say it by, by this example, because this is kind of, this is exactly what you're saying. I have a, I have a hairdresser, obviously. And, um, cause your hair is so fly. No, no, <laughs> this is like me do, trying to do it myself. But when I was actually going to the hair salon, um, the owner of the salon is male and he's very nice. And I would go in and we'd always say hello. And he doesn't cut my hair. My, the other girl does. And she's come to me before as a client. And that's how I found her as my hairdresser. So she tells everybody in the salon about me. She's very cute. She gives out my card all the time. And he knows what I do. And he's very religious and very, very um, anti-psychic medium astrology. He truly is like, I, that's the devil. I don't dabble in it. And that's his belief and his opinion. And that's, I'm never going to say you shouldn't believe what you believe because that's his belief. Mm -hmm. But um, he 
was doing something by the sink and I started picking up on his father. And I, so I was telling my hairdresser and saying things, she's like, you have to tell him this. And I, she says, you don't understand. The salon is named after, like it's his middle name. Like you need to tell him this right now. And I was like, I can't tell. Like he's gonna think I'm crazy. She goes, no, 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 he likes you. She's like, it's fine, just tell him. He knows what you do. So he came over and I, I segued into the conversation by saying, I know you don't believe in this stuff. Can I say something to you? And he's like, yeah. I, and at first I said, why don't you? And then he started telling me why. And he said, I believe people like you have gifts. He said, I'm not going to say that they don't. He said, but I also believe the Bible says that this is divination. This is the devil. And actually, I'm not going to get into that whole Bible, what it says, what it doesn't. But I will say that if you go back to the old scriptures, tarot is in, it's actually in the Bible. It's in the Bible. So um, I'm not... I believe intention is everything. I believe there are people that are accountants that are evil. I believe that there are people that are contractors that are evil. There's evil people everywhere. You know, I'm not, sorry, I shouldn't say it that way, but bad intentioned people walk this earth. That's reality. So it doesn't matter what they do, what their gifts are. So they're going to exploit and abuse and use anything to their advantage, no matter what it is, because that's their character, right? Mm -hmm. Do I look like the devil? <laughs> I mean, my intention is to use my gifts for the greater good. I always, I'm Catholic, you know, I always infuse my readings and my energy with love and with light. That's all I'm trying to do. Um, so my answer to that is, is what I'm saying. That's kind of what, it, that's how I answer it. But the purpose of what I do isn't to, it's, it's just to help. It's not to make you believe or change your mind. It's just to, to help. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, I think, but again, astrology is really, it's not necessarily science, I guess you could say it's pseudoscience, but, but it is the language of energy, it is real. I mean, it is, some people think it's nonsense, but it's, if you have your birth chart done by a professional astrologer, name hey, Lisa, well, or any other one, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you, you will see quickly that it is not by any means not real. I had a male client of uh, his wife. Who, he's a complete non-believer, complete. And if you know astrology, I can tell you, he was very, very, very left-brained technical guy. We all have intuition, but his was more not tapped into. He's very logical. Everything's logic, logic. And I, I knew before I even met him, I was like, oh, geez, this is going to be a rough one because we don't speak the same kind of language. I speak in metaphor. I'm always like in woo-woo land. And he's like, show me. So we start talking and I was like, I'm just gonna go with what I'm feeling. And I started talking about the family and I was like, boom, boom. And he was like floored. And he said, I never believed in this ever. He said, I cannot believe how accurate that is. He said, you've told me things that my wife doesn't even know. Like from childhood, there were things that, would co that had come out in that reading that she didn't even know. So she's like, wow, you've made him a believer. And since then I've read their kids, I've done their comparison charts. Like, and they're really, you know, it, it's helped their marriage. Because it's, you know, it's it's really a helpful tool when you, knowing your own energy helps you so much better working with other people. You have to know yourself first, right? Oh my gosh, the six is me. I oh. think the <laughs> earlier is me. Oh, okay. So yeah. Were just <laughs> my son's birthday is on the six. That's crazy. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And my mom's birthday is in the sixth month. My partner's birthday is in the sixth month. Like. That was stupid. Yeah, your dad um, and are hanging out together. <laughs> they are. They're watching the podcast. Finally, a viewer of the podcast. We have two viewers of the podcast. <laughs> you got some followers, uh, fan base on the other side, females on the other side that are following her too. <laughs> so. I love it. So Lisa, hopefully you'll like come back with us in another yeah, time because- um. I, like I said, I know this is amazing to, for me and, um, Andrea's dad showed up and that's just like, I was really hoping that would happen. <laughs> where can, where can anyone find you, um, who wants to contact you and, and let's make it clear. Remember I'm in Michigan, Lisa's in New York, so you don't have to be in New York. No, we do it just like this over Zoom or Skype. Um, it's just my website, lisasalvatore.com. Uh, my Instagram is lisaasalvatore. 
And my Facebook is Lisa. It's all on my website also on the homepage. You can find all my social media. And we'll and put all that in the, we'll put that all that like in the YouTube and in the comments and everything. And um, I am, I just feel so blessed that you are here today. Like I, it is just Thank such a- for having experience. me. It was fun chatting with you ladies. It was a lot yes. of fun. Yes, good questions. I like your questions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, yeah, I, I was nervous. I have to say, I, I was nervous. So I am so, and I wore my shirt for the- I know, I see that. My astrology shirt. My, my mom is so funny. She'll, every time she goes, well, she hasn't gone because of COVID, but when she would go to Kohl's, Kohl's always had like Zodiac shirts and, and she would always think she was so cool. She, I got you some t-shirts. And I'm like, mom, I don't need any more astrology t-shirts. I have like 50, <laughs> I never wear them anymore. So, but she always buys me and I love it because they're cool, you know? Oh, that's a question. Real quick, how did your parents take to this? If we yeah. can ask, this. yeah, of course. So they're really cool because my my dad's like really proud of me. You know, my mom uh, psychic ability runs really strongly on my mom's side of the family, especially. So my mom has it too. My sister, like everyone's very in tune and intuitive. Um, so she, they're supportive of it. Like they like they get me they they, they get me clients. They tell people to talk to me all the time. Um, yeah, so there, no, they. That's one thing I will say. They never made me feel like you know weird. They're like, wow, they're like you're good. Like this is your gift. You know, go out there and. So they really never made me feel different or weird about it. It was like kind of my own thing, you know. <clears throat> so they've been I, super supportive. I love that. Well, Lisa, we are gonna respect your time, but this has been so fun. Yeah. So, fun. so much fun. <laughs> and uh, we will put all your information. Just nobody, when I'm ready to call, don't take my spot. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, and I'm, yeah, because oh. I'm already looking on, on her site, like, okay, like what, like so, what I want. Well, I was gonna say, um, oftentimes my calendar is not 100% because I'm in transit right now. So if you find that you're trying to book me and it's like really far out and you're feeling like you need something sooner, just shoot me an email. And just say like, hey, you know, I, I was looking to book a session. Do you have anything sooner? And I'll always, if I have the space, emotionally, energetically, I will do it. So, um, yeah. Just and she out. does all kind of um, things. So you do one on one. You do groups because I signed up for a. Is it a? Is it a medium? Oh segment? yeah, on November twenty second. Yes, which yep. I am so excited about. Um, so look, she has like a whole bunch of opportunities to connect with her um so make sure you do that and and enjoy and open up to it and you know like i said this is this this is my jam like i love <laughs> it. there's nothing scary about it either i just want to be clear because i know some people are very very nervous because they're afraid they're going to hear something bad um i always say nothing's really bad right there's just less than stellar things that we don't necessarily want to hear, but they could be very helpful also at the same time. Um, and I'll never tell anybody what to do. That's my other, that's, I always say that people will ask me, should I do this? And I'm like, I'm not attaching myself to your karma. <laughs> so I will just tell you what I see and what I feel. And then I'll give you my input, but I'll, but you decide what you're, you know, I will not be responsible for a oh, one more funny, quick story. Sorry. No, yeah. no. I'm just thinking, because you asked me about like funny things that happened. Last January, this past January, excuse me, I believe I had COVID. Um, it was before it was really out there that, you know, yeah. we really knew what it was, but I, it was right after Christmas and I got really sick and it was like six or seven days of just, like, I couldn't, I couldn't even think straight. My head was so clogged, I had a horrible headache, so stuffy. And I had a lot of reading scheduled and it's really difficult when you get sick like that because you have to then reschedule like quite a few people. And you know how it is, it's, it's hard scheduling as it is. Yeah. So I felt so bad because people were waiting and I'm like, I'm really sorry, but like, I can't even breathe. Like I can't, there's no way I could tap in energetically and do this reading. So I had to cancel reschedule like seven, eight, nine readings that week. And um, there was one and it was towards the end. And I remember, I will never forget, this is gonna sound gross, but I was sitting on my couch with a tissue up one side of my nose because the acupuncturist <laughs> told me that that helps drain it. So I had the tissue up one side of my nose. I couldn't smell anything. And I saw I had one client and I was like, oh, I have to reach out to her and I have to reschedule. And it was an astrology consultation. 
And I was feeling a little bit better at that point, but I still couldn't really breathe. And I was like, all right, it's astrology. So maybe I can turn the psychic brain off and just stick with the chart. And that doesn't really work for me. I mean, I can do it that way, but I, it just never stays that way. So I, for some reason, I felt like I couldn't cancel on this. It was the weirdest thing. I'm like, I, I have to do this reading. As I'm sitting there, I'm smelling like this really strong, I'm just going to be honest, disgusting flower perfume, like disgusting. It was really Ooh, gross. Chantilly, I call it church perfume. But I, but the thing is I couldn't smell. And I, in my mind, I didn't even connect that dot. Like I wasn't even like, but I can't smell. Why am I smelling this? So I get on the phone with her and we start talking and I just, her mom just like overtook me. And I'm like, wait a minute. Is your, did your mom wear, and I said, I'm just going to say like this disgusting flower. <laughs> and she started cracking up and she's like, I begged her to come to me. Today is her anniversary. And I was like, see, this oh. is why I couldn't cancel her. And I smelled and I said to her, I want you to know I can't even smell. And she, and I mean, I was like, poof, like overtaken. She wanted her daughter to know that she was there that day and she was not canceling. <laughs> so anyway. You tell that lady to give you another smell. Cause if I smell Chantilly, that's over. That's the rest of my day. <laughs> it was pretty bad. <laughs> it was pretty bad. But that's another thing that how they connect with us just for anybody uh, listening, watching uh, the other side connects through smell. So if you know, if like your grandfather had a specific smell or your aunt had a specific perfume, you may find that out of the blue, you'll get blasted with that smell. And you may think it's a figment of your imagination, but that is one of the strongest ways spirit connects is through smell. My mom just smell. said she smelled, I think it was my grandfather. She, she yes. smelled him like last week. And, yes. um, and my sister, I feel like is, is very sensitive to that. My youngest sister is very sensitive to that, that, that smell thing. Like, I, yeah, I don't know that. I don't think I am like, but as, as sensitive as I am to present <laughs> smell, but, and that's another thing I just feel like I want to mention real quick. And that is that you, you animals will come through and like, um, like yeah. Lisa has talked about, like, there's a dog over there, like with your dad and it was my sister's dog. And then talked about my grandfather's dog. Like it, like they come through. So yeah. I did a session last week and the woman, I, before we even really got going, I said, I keep seeing a, a dog's paw, like going like this to your hair. And she started hysterical crying. She's like, I just put my dog to sleep three days ago. And I was begging that you would say something about him. I'm like, oh, well, he's here. You know, I'm like, he's letting you know. And she said, he always used to do that to her. Like he'd paw at oh. her hair. That was really, even I was surprised. I'm like, oh, I'm becoming an animal channeler. <laughs> <laughs> do you do like, do you do um, like um, work with like, um, police agencies or anything like that? I have not done that. Um, I think that's something that I would be very, I don't know. I have, I, I mean, I've never been asked to, so I can't really say, mm -hmm. but uh, I think again, it's more of like mental for me where it's like a level of, oh, what if I'm wrong? You know, like what if, cause reality is no one's right a hundred percent of the damn time. Right. There it goes. And if it's something serious, like you, that's such a level of responsibility, you know? Um, so no, as of now, I have not. Okay. Yeah. But I didn't even know if that was really a thing. Like if oh, I if, think so, I mean, okay. I think it is for sure. Um, absolutely. Cause I've helped people find things when they lost them or, you know, Oh, wow. Well, I'm sure. But again, it's like, if I'm not getting it, I'm not getting it. Like, I'm not going to pretend that I'm getting it. You know what I mean? So I no, I have not. Okay. I just want to go on record as saying that when Sammy passes away, she's an older cat. I do not want to hear what she has to say. <laughs> I have a feeling that she will cuss me out <laughs> in the afterlife. So I'm just going to go on record as saying that. Okay. Well, let's see. <laughs> she does look a little, a uh, little, uh, what's the word? Spit, spit fire-ish. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, she is. <laughs> well, I take away from that two things. One, Andrea will be calling you. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. For sure. Lisa, thank you so, so much. We're going to put Lisa's information um, in in the post. And um, Lisa will come back again. She said that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe next time we could do like a little live chart fun so people can yes. see. Yes. Oh, oh that was to the planets because, um, you know, every planet represents different areas of life. So, and we all have different signs in different planets, contrary to just our sun sign. 
So that's why we're so, what's the word? Um, I don't want to say intricate, but I guess very- Multifaceted. There you go. Complex. Yes, complex. <laughs> complex. Which is how, oh, here I go again, keep talking. Sorry, I'll hey, stop. But this no, is how I no. astrology too, because I always, because I was so sensitive, especially to the stomach, and I could feel like the vibration of people. And, and I'm like, I would read about Taurus because I'm a Taurus. And I'm like, okay, they say Taurus are sensitive, but this is like another level. Like, this is not, this is weird. And I started reading more and more about it. And I read about the moon sign and the moon is our emotional world. And the moon changes signs every two to two and a half days. And that's who a person is emotionally, instinctively. So for example, I'm a Taurus sun, but I'm a Pisces moon, which means emotionally I'm like a Pisces. And a Pisces is a very sensitive sign. It's a water sign. So water, a water moon makes you very spongy. So anyway, that opened up my astrological world. And I'm like, oh my gosh, where's my Venus? Where's my Mars? But, and let me tell you, I haven't stopped since. So it's very, very cool to, to really dive into that for yourself, even just study it on your own if you don't want to get your chart done with a professional, but studying it on your own is so helpful too, because you really do learn a lot. It's really it cool. It is. Is that why I'm a little bit chilly because I'm a Virgo moon? Yes. <laughs> yes. And Virgo moons tend to be, Virgo is a sign and I have a lot of Virgo in my, I have other planets in Virgo. So I can say this from experience, Virgo can be obsessive. Okay, for better or worse, Virgo can obsess about perfection. So wherever that falls in your chart, it's like you feel this need to be, it has to be perfect. It has to be right. You're very critical of yourself. So I am critical of myself, but I'm very chaotic. A like, moon, well, that's the Pisces. Pisces, well, because Pisces and Virgo are both mutable signs, which means changeable. So it's like you can't stay in one spot for too long because you get bored. And also, um, you could be hot on something for one for, for like 10 days. And then all of a sudden you find something else. It's like, push them off in that direction now. And then you make yourself crazy because you, you really want to stick with that one thing, but you're feeling pulled to something else and it has to be perfect and it has to be right. And then you obsess at night and you give yourself stomach aches. Like that's the Virgo moon. <laughs> that's the Virgo moon. Yes. I'm up here trying to find out what my moon is, right? <laughs> I love yeah. her. Just, just to see, just to see what's- Yeah, what's just Google it. the date of your birth with the year. Mm -hmm. I mean, Wait, no let, me guess, let me guess let me guess your moon okay let me guess it and oh. i i don't know if oh oh there it is okay okay i feel like i tend to guess the rising sign more than the moon so do you have your chart up or just the moon i just i, I just put in moon sign calculator okay that's... i'm gonna guess you've got a major capricorn placement <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I could tell. I see. I'm, I'm. I'm. I am good at this. I promise. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, um, I don't know why I'm shocked, but like I was just like, wait a minute. Thank so you're a Leo Sun Cat Moon. Yep. No way. I'm gonna go with a rising of. Hold on. I'm gonna go with Pisces. I'm gonna go with a water sign rising, which would be Pisces, Scorpio, or um. Oh my gosh. Why Cancer. Why? Answer. Thank you. So I'm going to actually now I'm going to, you know what time you were born? Mm -hmm. Hey, hold on. I'm actually going <laughs> to go on my software. I'm going to see if I'm right. So now I'm curious. Hold this on. is so fun. <laughs> so. Um, what's your birthday? Uh, August 13th. What year? Uh, 1981. Oh, do you mind sharing this live? You don't care. Oh, right? no. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> What time were you born? Uh, 4.31 p.m. Okay. 31 p.m., but I was 1.31. And what city were you born in? In Detroit. Okay, so 4.31 p.m.? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's see what we got. Boom, 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 boom. So, oh, okay. So you're an eighth house. You're an eight. Blah, 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 I can't speak. You're a Leo sun in the eighth house, which is the Scorpio house. So you have a Scorpio type energy to your personality. Um, moon in Capricorn in the second house, which is the Taurus house. So very grounded, very earthy, very practical. You're good with, you want to make money. You want to build something. Um, sense of there's a, 
you know, you're, you're cute because you're a lot of fun, but you're also very serious. You know, you shut it down. <laughs> it's like, can't have too much fun. We got to schedule our fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> is that true? That is so true. That is so true. I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay. My fun meter is full now. I got to go. Bye. So you're, yep, you're a Sagittarius rising. So, okay. So just not to confuse people. Um, let me close this. So here we go. So this is how it works. You come in with, there's 10 major planets. Is it okay that I'm going overall on this time? Okay. It is okay. Our time is your time. Okay, cool. So um, well, there's 10 planets in the chart that make up the personality. It's the sun and the moon, which are the two life forces, right? The sun is light, the moon is dark. So the sun is what people see, the moon is what's hidden. So the sun is the ego and the body and the moon is the soul. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. So your personality is very Leo. You're out there. You're like, hey, I'm I'm Andrea, I'm this. I, you've, got, you've got the Leo hair, like the curly Leo hair, you know? Um, and it falls in the eighth house of Scorpio. So there's the water. Now, what that means is because there's 12 houses in a birth chart and each house is represented by a different sign and then each house governs areas of life. The eighth house is the Scorpio house. It's the house of sex and death and rebirth and taxes and real estate and it's a deep water house. It's very psychological. So any planet that falls in there asks you to come into this lifetime and extend that Leo energy in that area of life. So your fun, vivacious, fiery Leo is meant to focus more on those Scorpio areas of life. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then the moon in Capricorn, very reserved emotionally, very stoic. You feel a lot, but you don't say a lot. Mm -hmm. When you do say it, it carries weight. Like you're oh, that is her. That like, is her. <laughs> you're the, you're, this is you. You're the friend that is like listening to the same thing over and over and over again. And I'm this friend too, even though I'm a Taurus. Listening to the same thing over and over. And then finally, you're just like, I told you 10 times that that guy's a jerk. And, that, and you just like lay it on the line. Because it's like, okay, I've heard you complaining now over and over again. Let's get with this, right? Whereas like a moon, a different moon, like a, a moon in cancer is going to be like, oh, let me give you another hug and feed you again and listen to the same story again. And you're like, nope, I'm <laughs> done with this. Like moving on. But you care. It's just, you care to a point. You're not going to care to your own detriment and you don't want to hear people wallowing in their, like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, and then the Sagittarius. Oh, oh no. Pretty well. I'm sorry, go ahead. We had a glitch. Okay. So 4.31 p.m. you were born. At that exact moment, the sun is in Leo, meaning that August 13th is just Leo time. So you're a Leo. Mm -hmm. The moon was in Capricorn. The moon changes signs every two to two and a half days. So obviously not every Leo is going to be the same emotionally because they're going to be a different moon sign, right? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. About the horizon of the sun. And at 431, it happened to land in Sagittarius. So even though you're a Leo, a very big part of your personality presents itself like a Sagittarius, okay? Mm -hmm. So you're very fiery. You come across very fiery, but you're actually a lot more grounded and introspective than people realize until they get to know you, until they become very close. And then they see that side of you. Is that, that her optimism? Is that where she- Sagittarius, yes, because yeah. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter's a, benef a, benef a, be a benefic planet. So it's like, it grows what it touches. It likes to be expansive and optimistic and it wants you to travel and see the world and always have a higher mind and a broader perspective and never stop learning, that's Sagittarius. The constant student of spirituality, of politics, religion, foreign travel, everything. It's like, you just can never absorb enough knowledge. Yeah. How and you you're doing, Andrea? I feel like, wow. Um, <laughs> that, yeah. I mean, I, I have always said that, um, and people have told me that I am hard to get to know. Like, you know, but to your point, like when they get to know me though, then I am just very like, you know, I, I give and I give and I give, but I, but I am very reserved for the most part. I mean, and part of that is, me being an introvert but like like I am very like I don't like I'm like I'm gonna give you the Andrea that I think 
you, this is going to sound shitty, but I'm going to give you the injury that I think you deserve. I'm the same way. It's okay. and, <laughs> and then you have to like convince me to give you these other parts of Andrea. But until then, like not everybody gets the same Andrea. So like if, if, and, and a lot of that is off of the energy that I feel when I meet somebody. So if I meet somebody and I'm like, okay, in my mind, I'm like, okay, they're only going to get, you know, 25% of me and that's it. And it's not really a conscious decision, but it's just right. it's how I feel about That's it. very important because you have two major fire placements, Sagittarius and Leo, both fire signs, and you're, you're um, an eighth house son, which is Scorpio. Very intuitive. So you have to trust those feelings. We all have to trust. When you meet somebody and you're like, oh, when your body does that, the body doesn't play. So it's like, okay, I feel in my body that that person's not good for me. It's when you ignore that that the problems kick in. So you have to trust that instinct. And to what you said about, that's an earth thing because Capricorn is earth. So major earth placements do lend to that. Like, no, you need to show me first. Like what side, I used to be as open as I am. Like I'm here, I'm having this conversation. I'm very open, but personally, and this has only happened in the last five, six years or so. For me personally, like people have to prove to me and not like I make them do it. I'm not like, oh, go jump through hoops to be my friend. Right, it's not right. like that. It's more like emotionally, I have to feel like I can trust you or mm -hmm. I'm not opening up anymore, yep. like more than I'm going to. It's not, it's, it's, and it's not conscious. It's just, it's unconscious. It's like, yep. I know I can be too open. So I have to kind of pull that back when I feel yep. like, well, I really feel that it's, that I can do that with certain people, you know? Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's me to, to a T and like some people, you know, it's like in the dating world, like it's the reason why so many good guys that I've met only get so far, you know, and, no. and then, but then it's like one person gets all the way and I'm not talking sexually. I'm just talking about like right. emotionally and like trusting, you know? And so it's like, it was nothing wrong with those guys. And we got along and we laughed and we joked and it was fun and we hung out and we dated great but there was something that was not jiving yeah, feel it yeah. and it was probably astrologically correct or incorrect if we were to look at the charts together which is called synastry you can look at the, the chemistry the basic um, this is, goes for friends also friends co-workers anyone that you're connected to if you're like i need to figure out the dynamic of our relationship. Why is it like this? Then we can, you can look to a synastry chart and you can see the way your planets, it's like taking one chart, chart A and chart B and you overlay them to see where your planets fall in each other's chart. And that will kind of give you an idea as to where the problems are and where the strengths are. Mm -hmm. Couple come to you for readings like that? For, yeah. Oh, wow. I yeah. actually, all this stuff you can do. So it's fun. It's, and I'm really open-minded too. So if I have a client that signed up for just a basic intuitive session, which when, when we have those, that's like tarot, that's mediumship, that's whatever comes through. Astrology, I keep separate because some people genuinely are like, I just want you to do my chart and tell me, and so we'll stick with that. But sometimes in a basic session, someone will something will come up about a partner. And I'm like, well, do you know their birth time? Yes. I'm like, do you want to look? See how you guys can, you're sure. And then we'll look and I'll say, okay, this is because you go at things this way and he goes at them this way. And so it's kind of like meeting in the middle and accepting the other person for who they are. But first you have to accept yourself, warts and all. <laughs> you have to figure out where, where are your shortcomings, right? Because we all have them. Mm -hmm. And then you decide if you can work with the other persons. Mm -hmm. I love this. I love this. We're cool, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. Um, yeah, this is cool. I could talk about this stuff all day. Oh, and I'm so glad you chose to do it with us. Like, yeah. this <laughs> and it's funny too because it just so it just so happened. Like, this is gonna sound so bad. I plan. You know what I planned on doing today? Cleaning my bathroom. That was okay. <laughs> my plan for the day was to clean my bathroom. And so when you asked me, I'm like, oh, I was supposed to clean my bathroom. And I was like, yeah. Get the bathroom. Like I could do it right, right. after. It's no big deal. I don't really want to scrub the tile in the shower. I'll, yeah. I'll spray some scrubbing bubbles on it and yeah, yeah, yeah. This is more fun. <laughs> well, Lisa, thank you. Thank um, you. I know more about Andrea now, and I feel <laughs> this is so fun. And um, next time, what are we doing? We're doing astrology chart. What is that? We're doing. 
We said next yeah. time we're going or or if you want, we can even do something fun where you can like get some random, like one or two random people and you can, ah. link, I can give them a little reading, you know, like just random. Awesome. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, hopefully uh, we didn't suck the life out of you today and you just, you gave me life for sure. Oh, so, good. For sure. And you see, you gave me life too. See, I love, I love this. So this is fun for me. And I will um, see you on the 22nd when yeah. I join Lisa's mediumship circle. And again, make sure you see, like, look, look at all of the cool stuff that you can learn and find out. And, you know, whether it's about yourself, somebody else, or just about how things work, a different POV, because, yeah. um, you know. And if you're a newbie and you're scared <laughs> or you're, you're interested, but you're scared, you can always reach out with any questions that you have to ease your mind to kind of see if it's something you want to go further with. I'm completely not one of those people that's going to be like, nah, I'm not answering any question until you pay me. If you really are like, listen, I'm, I want to talk to you, but I'm scared you're going to tell me that, you know, I will ease your mind. Then you decide if you want to work with me or not. And you have a witness, like I have heard things that are not lovely, but the way Lisa conveys it, it, it just, it's, it's, it's strangely comforting it's like or strangely like That's okay nice. if you're a person that doesn't love information like you know or you know I don't know it's 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 one of those things where in the moment you're just like okay with it and you just take it for what it is and you keep listening and the more you listen the more you learn and the more you see how things come together and for every you know, something unsettling, there's like 20 things that are not. So it's just, it's, it's an experience. Yeah. And something I also want to say is if anybody's ever had a reading where they hear something that they don't like, you, I always tell my clients, pray it out, like actively just pray it out. Just say, okay, I heard that this is a possibility and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to, I'm going to actively do what I can to, to shift that energy. I'm also going to pray it out that pray that it doesn't happen. Um, we have more control than we realize in a lot of ways. So something to think it. about. I love it. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. It was so much fun. I'll see you. So much fun. Why do I always wave on Zoom? Does anybody else do that? It's so I, do, I do it all the time. I'm like this and I'm on mute. Bye. bye. I haven't said anything on meeting, but bye. <laughs> it's just like, bye. I don't know why I do that, but anyway. Oh my gosh. Well, we will see you all next time. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to Lisa's newsletter. It's always full of good information. I get it and I love it. And because I'm going to sign up. Yay. And her Instagram and her Facebook always have lots of fun stuff and serious stuff. And it just always is magical and mystical. And it's one of my favorite um, pages to follow. So make sure you do that. Yes. All right. Bye guys. We will see All you right. next time. We don't know if we'll All have right. something as fun, but we'll have something. We'll do something fun. Okay. <laughs> Bye.